So you need to do a science experiment. Your curriculum guide says, teach the scientific method. But you're not sure what it looks like. This video will help. The scientific method has seven steps. The first step is to think of a question, something you want to find the answer to. Then make a prediction or a hypothesis. Gather your materials that you will need, figure out how you're going to do the experiment, record your results, record any conclusion you can make from these results, and think about how you can apply these results to future experiments. Before you begin, you'll need to gather some materials. You will need a cup of water, a can or a bottle of clear soda, two clear plastic containers, these were made from water bottles, a handful of raisins, a paper towel to clean up any spills, you also need scissors and a knife to cut the bottles, newspaper, and a plastic bag if you want to cover the newspaper for spills. You will also need a notebook of some sort to record your results, your conclusions, and any other notes. You can use the knife to cut the top off the plastic bottle. Let's review. Your materials are one cup of water, one can or bottle of clear soda, two clear plastic containers, about 10 raisins, fresh, newspaper, a plastic bag or tablecloth, a science notebook. Now it's time to set up your experiment. First, take your newspaper and take a few sheets and lay them out on the table to protect it from any water or soda. Next, you can take the plastic bag, which you have cut with the scissors, and you can lay it down on top of the newspaper to prevent damage to the table and from spilling. Next, take your two clear plastic containers and place them on the plastic. So now we begin our experiment. Our question is what will happen when raisins are dropped into water and soda? You can either give your students this question or have them come up with their own. Once your students have come up with a question or you have presented the question, it's time to make a prediction. You and your class can come up with a class prediction or each of your students can come up with their own. Here are some sample hypotheses that you can offer your students or that can help guide you when helping your students write their own. The raisins will float in both liquids. The raisins will sink in the water and float in the soda. The raisins will sink in both liquids. The raisins will float in the water and sink in the soda. Your students will be trying to find out whether their prediction is correct when they do this experiment. Now it's time to conduct our experiment. You can either give your students pre-printed step-by-step directions, or you can come up with your own procedure as a class. This depends on how much time you have to conduct your experiment. After you have set up your experiment, take your water and pour it into one of the clear plastic containers. Next, take your soda and put it into the other plastic container. You do not need to fill the containers to the top. Be careful when you place the containers down as the surface area may not be flat because of the plastic bag and the newspaper. Make sure you close your bottle so that you do not spill it. Next, take your raisins. You will not need all of them for this experiment, but take four, two for each bottle. Drop two of the raisins, one at a time, into the water and observe. Next, drop the other two raisins 
into the soda and observe. The observation part of an experiment is very, very important. Make sure your students look carefully and notice as much as they can. Now it's time to record our results. Remember to repeat your experiment a minimum of three times to assure that you have accurate data. Record your observations in your science notebook. Review your observations and look for patterns. Record any variables that may have affected the results of your experiment. Here are some sample results we may have seen during our experiment. The raisins in the water sunk to the bottom right away. The raisins in the soda sunk and then rose up to the top. Then they fell back to the bottom and rose up again. I noticed that there were air bubbles on both the raisins in the water and in the soda. It's important to remind your students that your results and your hypothesis do not have to be the same. Sometimes, when what we expect to happen does not happen, it leads to new discoveries. Your results can be recorded in a science notebook. Give your students a chance to personalize their notebooks. This will be a place where they can record pictures, notes, diagrams, more pictures and observations, and even work that you want to grade. These notebooks are a place for students to work out their ideas and keep them in one place. This is an example of a spacesuit designed by a student and the home where that astronaut would live. This was a test of a plane flight, some observations, and a hypothesis for the way the rocket would fly. This student is learning the scientific method and has written the steps here. Science notebooks are also a great place for students to do things like Venn diagrams where they can make conclusions based on comparing their results. Now that we've recorded our results, it's time to make some conclusions. When you make a conclusion, you state your result, explain why you think your experiment had these results, and you keep your conclusion short and to the point. In our experiment, our conclusion could be, the raisins sunk in the water and floated up and sunk down repeatedly in the soda. This is because the air bubbles in the soda were attached to the raisins and floated them to the top. When the bubbles popped at the top of the soda, the raisins sank again. The last step in the scientific method is future applications. To do this, you need to analyze your results. You may want to pose new questions based on these results. You may also want to figure out how to apply the results to real-world situations or use the results to plan future experiments. Here is an example of a future application for our experiment. As a follow-up experiment, I want to know how long the raisins will continue to bounce around in the soda. I am also curious as to how raisins would react in different liquids. Let's review. The scientific method requires you to pose a question and then to come up with a hypothesis or a prediction about what will happen. Then you will gather your materials and design a step-by-step -step procedure for your experiment. Then 
You must record your results and come up with a conclusion based on these results. You may also want to plan for future experiments. Now you do it!